is a FLIR. So this is what firemen would use to actually just toss on their phone real quick to go in and help save people. So this is the real deal. This is not a phone app you can download. Um, now, if you can see me in there, red, orange, and yellow guy, that means our cold spots are going to be blue and black. You have a green dot on your face. Like right here. Like I'm trying to figure out where that's coming it's from. This, it's the light in yeah. here. Okay. I can't. All I see is blue. I, I don't know where the green's coming from. It's a from. sniper. Get down. Get down. Get down. I know, right? <laughs> sniper, get down. <laughs> Love it. Um, but at any rate, so the blue and black, what I'm looking for in this guy is I'm looking for those blue and black to either take shape or to start moving on their own. So when I say moving on their own or taking shape, it's normally in the form of a person. So we're looking for head, shoulders, moving legs, arms. You guys get the picture of what a silhouette of a person looks like. Mm -hmm. Obviously, in a colder temperature, we need to know what that temperature is the nice thing is is i have a blue dot bouncing around the screen right now showing you exactly where the coldest spot is in the frame at that okay. particular moment okay. i'm looking for 15 plus degree temperature drops it's 67 degrees out here for us tonight so i'm going to be looking for anything below 52 that i can't account for as glass from a windshield or so forth and so on okay. so again i'm going to be kind of spot checking but that blue dot is going to be on your video when you get this back we're going to do a few starts and stops specific numbers so again it's not like January 1st you know it's, it's, it's something very specific um, you can also ask about the age I mean I'm obviously asking you to listen for numbers so that's kind of like a key thing for you how old she was when she you know got married to Charles or you can ask how old Charles was so see if you can get either one of those numbers um, with yours Donna Eliza was the second wife named Eliza from Charles back to back <laughs> so, even if like you're just gonna take a break and hold it down just keep it running oh, okay. um, until we leave the space um, but when you're getting something like this, even though you got people in the background, mm -hmm. um, it's literally when you have something in view a little bit closer where you're going to start to see a little bit more blue. Oh, okay. It's going to be because my heat is closer. The camera sees in 2D. It doesn't see in 3D like the way we see things in four-dimensional, right? Mm -hmm. So with us seeing people move around, we can see depth perception. It doesn't know that. That's why it gives you the white lines around things. You might have a white outline around mom, but her heat signature is just to the left of her. Got You're going to see that and be like, oh, mom, there's somebody next to you. No, it's just the camera a little confused. It'll recalibrate in a minute or two. Understood. Okay. So, um, but again, it's the closer you get to a, a human, the more difference of the color you're going to see. Got it. Because okay. it's going to, you know, obviously, there's a lot of thermodynamic scientific bullshit that goes into this <laughs> um, that I have to really research. Like, oh, was that something? Let me look at the laws again. Let me see if it makes sense. Two 
seven, two nine, and then it went like three three, and then it just dropped to uh, three three is good. So you need a little of that. Um, yeah, it just went three two. Have a little bit of something going on. Are they expect these little tiny jumps. It's almost like getting above twenty two. You're going to see the price difference. Okay. So um, anything coming up on the screen? Uh, I saw some like dry and. No, he said basically this one is like a five or six times a year kind of thing. But he said when it, when you do get something with this, it's a holy shit. Oh yeah. Because he says it's like there's no right, argument. Donna. It's like it's yes or no. You know? Birthday girl, from what I understand. <laughs> Santiago. What the heck? Chile. Chile, really? Big stuff. Okay. That word card is like sticking out to me for some reason. I don't know why. And I know we were over by Big John's. I don't know. There's something, I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen that word show up on this device before. Okay. I've been using this device for like six years, maybe seven. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it still surprises me. It has a pretty large dictionary. The mm -hmm. reason I like this one versus the one they use on TV, the one on TV only has like 2,000 terms in it. This has 9,000 terms mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. So it has a much bigger dictionary to choose from. So again, that's why the ratio of accuracy goes down. That's why only 20% of it's going to be relevant. Mm -hmm. So, But I like having that grab bag to see if we're missing a small piece of something. So, but but you yeah. did have the word pain pop up when you were over by Big John before, yeah. You, yeah. before you told us the story about the bullet to the neck and all that. So. Well, every place we're going to talk about has pain. That's, that's the problem. Mm. So we don't know what type of pain. I want the specific. I want the word neck. I want throat. I want bullet. Right, right. I want grazed. Like, you know, something specific to that pain. Right. So, but yeah, you can just circle back. There you go. It still works in the background even when you're on that. See, now we have the word spirit, which could have double meaning, right? Mm -hmm. We're near the tavern still. Could mean right, alcohol. Right, spirits. So, yep. very vague, but again, just want you to get thinking outside the box like right. that. Right, okay. So, um, okay. sometimes what you're hearing, if you have the, the word husband, mm -hmm. you've heard the phrase founding fathers. Uh, husband is actually considered one of the founding fathers. So, again, oh, cool. I like that he heard that. You have to kind of see where it's, you know, how is it matching up. I'm yeah. also waiting for the name Charles, um, you know, things like that. It's a little bit more specific, but you can find them all. It's quite considered. Is that a card now? Yep. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> that just gave me chills. Cause That's why all, you're here. It's all red and fiery. <laughs> why you're here. Wow. What just happened? Bloodletting. Whoa. Um. He told me that it's going to be very uncommon that I catch something. He says, but if I do, it's like a holy shit moment. Yeah. Okay. Because basically it's like they can see the heat signature versus the regular camera and determine if something was there or not. Alright, so um, her husband was one of the founding fathers. Oh, of really? Charles. And look at this.
He's kind of the defining moment. So if we're not getting the spikes that I normally would see as considered a high spike when we're going to get a lot of activity, that's where I kind of like rein it in. We're not going to spend a lot of time in a space where either me we're not wanted or two, nothing's going on. We have a couple of things. Obviously, yours is very specific, mm -hmm. which I'm excited about. switching it like that just make sure it ends in mg okay that's what I'm... yeah so like the the volts per milli hour or whatever that i don't understand it yet okay so it's the milli gauss that okay. i understand and can comprehend yeah. so if you're switching it there's three two different modes with milli gauss so it's, yeah that's what i was trying to go back on weighted in standard yeah. and that's what i said got we it. never got over Stop them, give your hands a break. see if any ghosts are going to come by. So if you want to hold it like a suitcase, you don't have to watch it. You can just kind of hold it down. There you go. Just hold it by your leg. Those are the best things that we can get because he's going to be pretty still by holding it that way. Um, <laughs> no, like, let me see what's going on. Um, so everybody's going to be staring at your legs right now, just so you know. Um, but anyway, this used to be called Duelers Alley. This is where some of the duels used to occur for the city of Charleston. So we are not going to spread out in this location like what we did previous. This is just so we can kind of stir things up. We're going to hopefully get bleed over at the next location because it's literally across the street that way. So again, you'd like to, it's nice to see how a duel went down when you're actually in the alley. So here's how it goes. We all tell the same story, just so you know. You're going to hear it a little bit different for me because you need different details for the spirit box work that we're doing. You're ghost hunting, not campfire marshmallow. So you guys get the point. There's a doctor that moves to Charleston from Rhode Island comes down here. His name is Dr. Joseph Brown Ladd. For those of you with spirit boxes, if you hear the song Brown Eyed Girl, it is not a coincidence. We get it here all the time. So, with that being said, he comes down here because he's supposed to get married. So his fiance, Amanda. Amanda just inherited a bunch of money from her dead parents. She has an attorney helping her out with all of his cash. The attorney thinks that Dr. Ladd is just after Amanda's money. He tells Amanda, get rid of that doctor. So Dr. Ladd comes to Charleston to prove that he's not after Amanda's money. As he's coming into town, the coachman set him up to be robbed and killed. It wasn't a good start to his stay here. Somebody was walking by. His name was Ralph Isaacs. I'm going to stop there for a second because Ralph has the same initials as where the doctor came from. Ralph Isaacs, Rhode Island. R.I. shows up on the spirit boxes a lot. I actually have a brand new device they just invented last year called a, it's, a, it's called the Envoy, but it's like a digital Ouija board. Um, and it, this is the reason why I got it, to see if we would get the letters R-I in this location. And we've had it on more than one occasion. We've had it for about six months now. So I just put that out there. Um, but anyway, Ralph tells the doctor, dude, you don't want to stay here. I know this guy. He's going to try to kill you. So why don't you come with me? I got friends at 59 Church Street. You can stay there, rent a room, and you'll be safe. Dr. Ladd took him up on the offer. They became friends. Very simple, right? The longer the doctor stays here, the more money he's making. He's proving his point. He's not after Amanda's money. So Amanda gets wind of this, she's moving down soon so they can get married. Dr. Ladd became known as the Whistling Doctor. Men actually whistled back in the 1780s, just so you know, it was a thing. I will also tell you that any haunted city you're going to visit in the future has a cliched whistling ghost. We all have one. We actually have proof of this one, and I'm going to get to that one. 
Dr. Ladd and Ralph go see plays together. They can't sit next to each other because the doctor makes more money. He gets better seats. This is the way the hierarchy works. They talk about the plays on the way home. So one night they go see Richard III from Shakespeare. They're arguing over the new actress that was in town. Ralph thought she was, Dr. Ladd thought she was fantastic. Ralph, not so much. <laughs> the argument that they had turned into Ralph insulting the doctor's fiance back home in Rhode Island. It got very ugly. They went their separate ways. Now, Ralph has friends here, like I mentioned. So he goes to his friends at the newspaper. He puts an ad in the paper telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. Kind of a, you're a disgrace to society kind of mentality. Doctor saw the ad, rebuttaled with, we're going to go to Dooler's Alley. We're going to settle this. Somebody's going to die. So they came down. They took their 10 paces. They turned. The doctor pointed his gun in the air. And he shot. He didn't want to kill his friend. He just wanted to have the courage and bravery to show up to the fight. So uh, that's what a normal size looks like, just so you guys all know. Now that you'll appreciate me more, no offense. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the smaller groups, I'm telling you. Like, that's one group following one guy. Yeah, it's crazy. But anyway, um, so he shot his gun in the air. They didn't want to kill his friend. But Ralph has his one bullet. He puts it in the kneecap on the doctor. Dr. Ladd didn't die, but Ralph proved his point that he's still pissed off. So Ralph's friends pick him up, they carry him home, take him to 59 Church Street, where he dies 10 days later. He refused medical treatment, probably due to the fact that he is a doctor and there are different kind of bullets back in 1786. He's probably more worried about the bloodletting that you actually had mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. letting the lead poisoning out. We did have the word bloodletting show up while we were at Pinckney Mansion. I didn't think we were close enough to call it anything relevant. Mm -hmm. Again, in here, I would have definitely said yes. For sure. Um, but it is one of those pieces where every ghost tour that comes down here tells you to listen for the whistles, right? So we're using a voice recorder. You don't need to listen too closely because it's being done for you. I will tell you that if you're going to come down here on your own and go all the way through the alley, use the voice recorders on your phone. Just keep in mind, every local knows this story. Anybody walking up and down Cumberland Street or Queen Street throws a whistle right down the alley. I do it every single night, <laughs> just so you know. We actually passed my garage in the weekend. I actually got booted out of here a few years ago. I'm going to get to that because that's the funny part of the story. <laughs> and it actually tells you why we're going to where we're going to next. But it is one of those things where I always throw a whistle every time since I've been booted out of here. I used to tell the story outside the alley to make sure I wasn't disrupting the neighbors. So here's how I got booted out. This is the fun part. You ready for this? You ready mm -hmm. to giggle a little bit? Mm -hmm. The alley didn't come all the way through. It was actually cut off between us and Cumberland Street about halfway. It's because this is where they kept the livestock. So cows, chickens, kind of things were down here. It was called Cow Alley. So again, it was cut off, which means those bricks are older than the bricks we're standing on. So those bricks on the other side are sun-dried bricks from slave children. You guys already picked up, I'm all about history. I'd always point it out, regardless of the diversity of my groups, because we all need to see how far we've come away from slavery. However, there is a handprint down there, and one of those bricks from a slave child. You can see it, it's very visible, and there's also fingerprint swipes. Well, I don't think that kid's hanging out over there because I treat it the same way I do a grave. Right? The kid's not there because that's not where he wants to be. He's not going to stare at the brick that he put his handprints in. My group on November 26th of 2020, full group of 10 by the way, is huddled around this brick waiting for something to happen. I'm trying to shoo them along because of the belief, and it's outside the kitchen window of the beautiful mansion at the end of the alley. The new owner of the mansion came out screaming. My daughter thought it was great because she was on a tour that night, and Dad's getting yelled at. So we moved on. November 27th was Thanksgiving that year. I don't tour on Thanksgiving because I worked in retail management for over 20 years, mainly for Walmart. Feel my pain. I don't work Thanksgiving mm -hmm. ever again. The next day, the 28th, I get a phone call asking me to go down halfway, which is what we're allowed to do because of the boundaries, or reroute my group. I decided I'm going to reroute my group because the rest of my tour was down the opposite end. So I told my tour, I don't believe in this next story. We're going to see what happens. I've never had any evidence there, and it's a pirate story. I'm a vampire guy. So we're going to see what goes on. Before we left, somebody heard the name Anne on a spirit box. I didn't tell that group who we were going to be investigating. The famous female pirate Anne Bonnie. So I went, damn it. So we get down there. I told a little bit about pirates in Charleston that I did know, because I had to do some quick research that day. And somebody else heard the number 300 on a separate spirit box. I don't know what that means. I write it down. I researched the next day. Turns out we were there November 28th of 2020. Anne Bonnie's trial for piracy, November 28th, 1720. We were there on the exact 300th anniversary of her pirate trial. So I'm like, yeah, now I got to learn about pirates. Now my library is a good portion of my, my bookshelves are pirates and how to debunk them. So luckily for you, I have a master's degree in creative writing. Trying to piece together a factual investigation based on pirate lore can be very difficult. So again, everything we're going to be discussing at our next location is going to be based off a minimum of two resources. Keep in mind, spirit boxes and communication devices, we may actually have clues from Philadelphia Alley as well. So I'll be looking at kind of both ends of things to kind of see how things match up. Um, so 
very just a very interesting spot. We're either going to have a lot going on or nothing going on. It is a hit or miss because Anne Bonnie is said to be seen all over town, and I'll explain why we go to that specific location and why we're there. So this would be another uh, interactive type ghost and where we're at. So it's just one of those pieces where we stir things up, and then we're going to hear from Dr. Ladd a little bit more as we move along. <clears throat> so any other words that showed up on your word list before uh, we leave? Inspector, um, female, Adam, Jonathan, farm, trick, Factory, Listen, Jessica. I like Listen. That's the only one because no. it's the whistling doctor. No. Um, just be mindful we got another group coming by just mm -hmm. so you know. Okay. Charge, Vendor, Taste, Tumor, Secret. Limitation? Ooh, I had she secret. had Secret along you the way had Secret here. too? Okay. Inspector? I think we, you told me Inspector. Inspector. Did I say? Okay, I couldn't remember Unless that, it was the second so. one. No. Nope, same one. I couldn't remember where I left. Do you have the word gadget after there? Like Inspector Gadget? <laughs> no. <laughs> There's a ghost in the in the porta potty. <laughs> it is the porta potty. That's a ghost thing too. So I'll be using that later. Okay. <laughs> uh, leave me alone. Any crazy phrases coming out of you? And I already got yours, so you're good. All right, perfect. So we're here in the back because the other ghost tours like to cut through as you just saw. So. Um, I just like to stay out of their way. This is a little bit of a lengthy story. Again, I'll cut out certain things because of our age group and our party tonight. Um, so we're here because of the little tiny building over there behind you. That is the Gunpowder Magazine. So it's a museum now, so if you ever want to spend five bucks and learn about the architecture of the place, it is fascinating. But anyway, we're here because those are not crosses on the building. Those are earthquake bolts. If you're unfamiliar with earthquake bolts, they're basically turnbuckles. So if we have another earthquake, like what I mentioned earlier, they can turn the turnbuckles day by day and tighten up the building so it doesn't incur any further damage. It's a great idea, it just doesn't work. Um, the reason I bring them up is because that's the first set of earthquake bolts that Charleston ever put in. Why? It's the oldest government building we have in South Carolina. It was finished in 1713. Wow. So we're here because this building is familiar to the time frame that Anne Bonnie came here to start her new life. So. It's kind of like if you've watched the TV shows, it's like the, the teddy bear that they use to kind of attract or you know interact with a child ghost. It's the same principle. This is what I call a familiar. We don't have many buildings around this time period, but again, this is where one of the spaces where we're allowed to be, and I've caught some pretty significant evidence in this location. So once I give you the history of the space, we will spread out, like what we did at the Pinckney Mansion site. Um, but again, this is a, a very unique story. So and. This is not a prominent English woman. We won't have to tiptoe around her. Poke the bear, get Anne to give you some damn answers here. So Donna's like, hell yeah, I wanna poke the bear. So <laughs> our story begins right in the middle of the building's construction. 1713 was when this was finished, but it took 10 years to complete its building. So it's a government building. Does that sound like our government? Small building, 10 years? No, not at all. Sorry if any of you work for the government. I actually had like some kind of FBI, CSI guy on my tour a few weeks ago, and I said that, and he's like, watch it, buddy. I'm like, whoa, hang on. But anyway, um, at any rate, Truth hurts. our story, I know. We can do it in eight. <laughs> <laughs> the story begins right in the middle, 1708. Follow me, there's a lot of twists here. I'll slow down on the twists so everybody grabs them. A young lady named Anne Cormack moves here from Ireland. She's with her father and his mistress. The mistress is Anne's mother. Is everybody with me so far? Mm -hmm. The three of them are running away from her father's angry wife. How mad was she that you gotta leave Ireland to come here by boat in 1708? Just like point that out, fellas. Keep the ladies happy. <laughs> so with that said, they land in Georgetown. That's obviously not Charleston. That's just north of here. So in between us and Myrtle Beach. Dad bought a plantation. Mom died pretty quickly. So that means he's sending young Anne down here to be able to sell anything from the plantation to keep things afloat. Hence the familiar building. Now, let's take a step backwards to Ireland for a second. Anne was said to be kind of a badass. They say she killed one of her servants with a knife to the belly when she was only seven, eight, nine years old. Remember, it's wow. pirate lore. Nothing's going to be exact. So, again, just want to put the mentality of this young lady in your head as we go through her, her quick life. So, 1713, the building's finished. 1715, pirates are coming through town. Anne is stoked because she's going to fall in love so she can earn her freedom just like a man. So that, it was a man's world at this point. So guy number one, we're going to count them because there's a handful. It's James Bonney. You already see where this one's going, right? The dad didn't approve, filthy pirates. They go to Jamaica. They got married. So now Anne Cormack is Anne Bonney, the famous female pirate. But James is not Captain Jack Sparrow like what she was hoping for. This guy's a privateer. He's a spy for the British. He's a coward in her eyes. This isn't who she wants. A few years later, she falls in love again. Guy number two, John Rackham, a.k.a. Calico Jack. 
This is the person that they based your Johnny Depp character off of, just so you know who this guy is. Calico Jack has his own ship and wants to be part of it. You can't put a girl on a pirate ship. Does anybody know why? Think family friendly. <laughs> mm. It's bad luck. So it's a curse to put a female on a ship. So again, I say family friendly because I've had some really nasty answers from that one. Um, but at any rate, he makes a deal with her. If you dress like a guy and look like my crew, you can be part of it, but you're going to be a girl in my quarters. She's okay with this because dad used to cross-dress her as a boy apprentice back home in Ireland to hide her from his wife. She's good. But being a female in his quarters, most of us are adults, put two and two together. She's eventually going to get pregnant. You can't have a pregnant pirate dude on the crew. <laughs> Somebody's going to figure out that she's a girl, and then they're going to get Jack off the ship. Jack decides before she starts the show, drop her off in Cuba. Have the baby, come back later, we'll figure it out. She goes and has a baby, but returns with no child. We have no idea what happened to this baby. Ironic part of the story is that she comes back dressed as a female. This makes Jack pretty angry. Now everybody's gonna know he let a girl on, on the crew. While she was gone giving his, birth to his baby, he captured another pirate crew. They're down below deck. She's gonna go flirting with that crew because that's who Anne is. We're on guy number three. Guy number three turns out to be a female, dressed like a guy to be part of the pirate crew that Calico Jack captured. Now we have two females, dressed like males on the same ship, trying to be pirates. This young lady's name is Mary Reed. She went by Mark Reed to become a pirate. Her and Mary became friends, possibly lovers, we're not going to really know for sure, but the, the British find out where they are. They send a fleet of ships to come take them out. Anne and Mary, the rumor is that they were the only two pirates not drunk enough to come up and fight with one bullet flintlocks, kind of like the same guns we talked about with the dueling story. Obviously, two ladies with flintlocks are not going to be able to take on a fleet of ships. They get arrested. As they're being arrested, she looks at her captain, her bow, Calico Jack. She says, I'm sorry to see you here, but if you would have fought like a man, you wouldn't be hanged like a dog. So the word dog shows up here a lot on your spirit boxes, just so you guys know. The judge wants to see the two quote-unquote men that fought back by themselves. He's already tried and hung Calico Jack and the drunk pirates that wouldn't fight. That's on November 26th. The two ladies go in front two days later. They reveal their gender. He doesn't give a shit that they're female. They're still pirates. They're still going to hang them. So, we plead our bellies was the last thing they screamed out because you can't hang a pregnant woman in 1720. It's illegal. So he sends them both back to jail, delays the hanging, and Dad is still up here in South Carolina with all of his Irish money. He was an attorney back home. So he bails out Anne, brings her home, she remarries. Husband number two, guy number four. We're going to count Mary. We don't really know. She has four kids, dies at the age of 84. Yes, very 84. abrupt ending. Wow. Mary Reed dies a year later from whatever pirates die from in a Jamaican jail. Most books and articles would tell you that it was something very simple, like fever or something very simple. Let's make it romantic. Let's call it scurvy. Why the hell not? Let's make it bumpy and gross and whatever else you guys want to come up with. <laughs> so two questions I left out of here on purpose. Everything else is fair game. I just wanted to give you guys something to start with when I you know, put this story together. I left out the name of Anne Bonnie's parents. That's the father and the mistress. I also left out the name of Calico Jack's ship. So try to find out what those two things are, or if you want to go rogue, just make sure they're not yes-no questions, or how she felt about something. I can't prove feelings. So if you find something and you get a direct answer, do you have anything coming up? You've been staring at that thing for a minute. Um, it's just a post-competition. Did I say charge before? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I think you did, actually. Um, we will also, with the motion sensor, it actually gives us color. Um, we're not using it tonight, but we would be able to ask Ann Bonnie what her hair color is, and she would show us on the motion sensor, because the only way to get a red out of it is to touch the motion sensor. So it's very interesting, and we would get it on command. Windy night, we probably wouldn't even be using the motion sensor anyway because of all the dust in the air that was in your guys' eyes earlier. So, um, again, I don't expect a whole lot of EMF out of this space. The closer you go that way, we have two electrical poles, parking meters on the other side of the bushes. Don't get excited if you get over a three. I will be excited if you get something like, let's say, over a seven on that half or above a five on this back half. Okay. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, a couple of things we actually hear a lot of here is the song Girls Just Want to Have Fun. So it's, we get it a lot. So kind of keep in mind, this is a, a, a fun pirate lady. Let's have some fun with this one. Um, wow. So right. the questions were um, her, her parents, parents' name. And name. Calico Jack's ship. Calico Jackson. Again, everything else, fair game. Ask okay. whatever the hell you want to. Okay. Um, so yeah, spread out. Let's have some fun in this one. I got the numbers three and two. Three and, two. and literally, right as you said ship, it said ship in my ear. Three, two, ship. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I said Three, it. two, yeah. ship. Okay. So your camera in this location, Josh, actually likes to act up. Um, when I first started doing this, I, I had very small group so I had just a party of two mm -hmm. um, that and the red spirit box that Kyle was using the person f was filming me and we'll just say you know Kyle and there was a white film that went over the spirit box person and then mm -hmm. the spirit box literally shut down like all the way off 
we walked out of the space, it turned right back on again, right to where it was, and it takes four button pressers to get it to the recording state that he's using it in now, and there was no interruption in the recording. We have it on film. The film wow, saved. Really? Yeah, crazy shit is going on with that camera in here. Okay. Two, shit. So when you said act up, I, I assumed you meant like break. <laughs> no. <laughs> like not um, work. It, it makes other things not work. It's weird. Okay. So we've had EMF detectors like kind of like falter in mm -hmm. this location. And when I say falter, like battery drain. Um, and again, those red things with the motion sensor, I, I wish I could make that stuff up. Hmm. I just can't. It's cool when you have like a like a recorded proof of this stuff, you know? It's like there, there's a lot that I mean I've been doing the tours now about three and a half years. And again, you would think I probably have enough if you were to just piece all the evidence together, I could probably make a two hour tour. Like that's that's where it's not like over substantial like what they express on the TV shows. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where it's like, Oh my god, we had all these things, but they don't explain anything. Like, okay, why did you hear a growl? Was there an animal involved? Was somebody couldn't talk because his tongue was cut out? Like, what's the reason why you heard the growl? They don't explain anything. And I think that's what upsets me about all of those shows is they give guys like me a bad name. Like, I'm out here, like, proving, like, why did we hear the word ship? Why did we hear the name Jack? You know what I mean? She heard three and two. I don't know what that means yet. It could be March 2nd. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That was yesterday. That was yesterday. And, I mean, and you're, you're actually tying it to some historical significance, too. Right, so that's always. Kinda, that's kind of cool. Even when I go into a new space, I don't want to know all the history. I do the exact opposite of what we're doing tonight, is I go in blind. Mm -hmm. I go through all the media, and then I do the research to see if it matches up to my media. That makes it make more sense, right? Yeah, and I find more things that way that are not the alleged counts of... Yeah, just be careful with the cops that I like a little weird. There's a cop on the corner. Oh. And we're technically on church property. There are certain spaces where I'm like super cautious. Mm -hmm. This is one of them. Because okay. It's one of those weird locations. What do you got, Leanne? Money. Obviously. Yeah, that's Pirate. an obvious one. <laughs> All right. Let me follow up with mom and Kyle and see what they got going on. Any reading? Any more screaming at No, we got a, like, over there was around just below five. Yeah. Right up there is like one point. space after this awesome. um, but again it's like once you realize when I tell you how much time we spent together you're gonna be like really it's one of those like you're gonna look at the end of it and go holy cow because I don't pay attention to time we just mm -hmm. go until stuff stops happening yeah and then we move on to another space mm. so going how's it going over there what? what do you got on there any ghosts uh, I saw something on that building on that building over around that building okay now, there's, I'm going to tell you right now, there's like 15 stories on the street corner. You see all these ghost stores? None of us are telling the same story. So, again, 
when I know most of them, so when something else pops up, like when you give me like 3-2 and I'm thinking of it as a date like March 2nd, I have to stop and think like what's going on with March 2nd around these other stories. So that means if something does pop up, that's where things kind of can go awry. I have a staple route, but sometimes it's, it's a little different. You know what I mean? That's why every night for me is completely different from the next. So, um, but again, this is the first night where that's the only EMF detector that we're using. So again, oh, okay. it's, it's very interesting to watch, especially somebody like you that wants to have fun and see something happen, yeah. that you're playing with it. And I'm like, yeah, good. He's flipping the dial. He yeah. figured out, don't be afraid of your device. Just use it. You know what I mean? Stuff gets used every single night. Now what do you got? Chase. Yeah, that's weird. That's a little too modern, I think, for me. It's, it's definitely not a 1700s name that I can tie it down to anything. Now, if they're trying to say Jack, they missed a letter. Um, you got anything? I heard Jonathan. Jonathan. Special. Did you get a chance to listen in on that thing? No, not no, I haven't. I will. Yeah, take a beat. Take a listen and see what she's going through. <laughs> She'll tell you, I... I just got 20. 20 is good? How did you hear it, though? Was it just by itself? It was, hear? no, it was just like 20. And then it switched to a different channel. That's part of the date of the trial, then. Oh, cool. 1720. So, if you were to hear like 2023, 20, no. I'm going to discount it because it's too common. It we was get... just very, very awesome. clear. That's why I, I heard 2023, 20, but I figured that was way too. It's too easy. Yeah. I just got it's good to be back. <laughs> Did you not hear that? I was telling my story. Oh. <laughs> she said, shut up. She didn't hear it. Yeah. It's <laughs> just... I hear better, man. <laughs> so, a little bit of Pearl Jam in the background, everybody. So here's the problem: is when it comes to songs, I make up my own lyrics anyway. And you'll know what it's really So there's not ever going to be anything that I tell you that's accurate. So it's not girls just want to have fun. What are they? Who's really have but, the milkshake? Yeah. Land is like yeah. <laughs> that, that's not the words of the song, right? No, What's like, funny, just so you guys know, on our way one night, a few months back, probably last. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Saw well, keep recording. Maybe I'll come back. Well, keep watching. Yeah, we gotta keep watching. Somebody was joking around and oh, heard no hands on my awesome. That was pretty cool. Yeah. And it disappeared. Oh. I'm gonna actually put myself in view. So keep recording. Just wanna see what kind of depth we're looking at. Can you guys see me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, so it would have been like further back. Like almost to the wall. Yeah. Can you still see me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. That's pretty far. Like, that's a good 100 feet. Yeah? Am I guessing about that right? About 100 feet? Ooh. Oh, wait. Oh, oh. There's something. Wait, wait. Right here. See something that, like, keeps flashing? Yeah. Yeah, something There's right there. Left. So, I'm going to guess that some of this plastic... Yeah, that's what I thought. Like yeah, but now, the before, it was right in... Well, and it was like, I mean, it was body shaped. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. it was. Well, we'll lighten it up and we'll see what we got out of it. Um, at this point, to make sure we don't lose it, hit your stop button and then you're going to hit it again. Once it's. Just to make sure we don't lose it. No. Perfect. No, it's just, it's showing me the coolest right point. There, but that's. And then, uh, what like I the ground. Was like, right there. like right there again. There it was yeah. again. Yeah, the plastic is probably going to cause a little bit of motion over there, just like what we had with the porta potty. Same principle, but with that wall, like I would imagine, he's probably he would have been picking up that tree that's above the wall, mm. but he's not. No, it was yeah, it was shape. down right. below. He's picking it up below. Yeah. But I would expect an arm going up, you know, a torso, yeah. and then maybe a few, you know, other things popping out. But I mean, he had a body shape over there. And so when you walked out closer to the, it was on that same plane, like nice. that you were on. Anything else being heard? 
I had 65 like probably a minute ago, but in the middle of that. I'm terrible oh. at this, so I can't <laughs> Like, I'm hearing all kinds of stuff. So here's... It's chaos, yeah. I got a little something. I, I can't say I'm 100% on it, but John Calhoun is buried on the other side of that wall. Oh. So we have Jonathan. We're in the month of March, and I can't remember the exact dates, but he was born in March, died in March, and I want to say the year he died was 65. So if we have the full date and the name Jonathan, like I'm gonna be like, that's all from. super cool. Yeah. However, if Jonathan. I'm wrong, Jonathan. then we still have Jonathan and the number three, the month of March. So again, I'm gonna dive in and see where my research like gives me the exact numbers um, to kind of verify it. But again, there it is again. Yeah. But it it's also by. everything he's finding is on that wall. Yeah. Yeah. And is that down. a solid wall? It's a brick wall. It's a brick behind wall. the ivy. Yeah, it's a brick wall. You can see the Because I was like, maybe it's picking up something behind it if it's just like a fence with ivy. I was wondering yeah, if it was the leaves thing. or some sort of artifact that way, but... Yeah, yeah, but if he's getting like a bodily figure... That's what it looks yeah, like, yeah. And that's what it was again. That's where, I mean, if it was the leaves, he would probably have multiple dots with a bunch of scrambles on there. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that he's getting a bodily figure... Now, can here's the other... closer with it, Kevin? Yeah, definitely. Let's walk no, slowly no. towards it. There's... Uh, that it's okay. Been a classic. Here, okay. Here. We're right with you. Come on. He's like, I don't want to go. Nope. under is on here. pictures you can find of Anne Bonny with a shirt on. So the reason why is because she oh, used to bear a breast to show men that they were just killed by a woman. Told you, she was kind of a badass. Um, so I get a lot of teenage boys on this tour. I don't need angry moms. So um, this is why I have this picture. Um, Anne's parents, William Cormack, Mary Brennan. Interesting thing about William and Mary is that they would normally show up in one phrase on a spirit box. So the same person will come up to me and say, I just heard the term William and Mary. So it's, it's always the same thing. So we didn't get any, either one of those names, and it wasn't a subliminal trick, by the way, because we do have Mary Reed from the ship. So again, it was just one of those commonalities that it just happened to be that way. Everybody wants to see what they base Johnny Depp off of. <laughs> and Darren's like, yeah, I do. So you're gonna laugh your ass off here in a minute. Um, so Calico Jack, they named him that because of the jackets that he wore. The jackets he wore came from British captains that he killed, so. These were fancy jackets. His father was a tailor, so textile was very important to him. 
So, Calico Jack translates to Fancy Jacket. That's where the name comes from. Uh, the name of his ship was called the Kingston. So I don't expect the word Kingston to come through your spirit boxes. The word King would suffice here. This is where we have to use our technology and what we're going to be able to hear versus what's the actual terminology. Same thing with the color of a red barn, blood. So Kingston, King, we're not going to hear Kingston here. It's very, very not a common word for us. Um, I would normally tell you another reason why I give the heated warning here, but Cohen's a little freaked out, so I'm not going to go into that detail. I will just tell you it is one of those cases where I can't explain it. Um, I had a transgender group on my tour one night, and one of them got sick. Um, and again, it was two females dressed as males, just like Anne and Mary in the story. And it was at this location. So I won't go into all the detail of it, but again, those are the uncanny things that I, that I see and why I give those warnings. So it is, just think about that for a second. The minute we entered here, that kid started to drop like a wet noodle, like it was bad. And it was September, so it wasn't any different temperature than what you're standing in right now. So it wasn't too hot, too cold. It wasn't out all day or lacking sleep. Um, but yeah, very interesting, detailed part of that. And I usually tell that on a nightly basis. I know. just heard kings.com. Kings.com. Yeah. So probably like the end of like draftkings.com. Yeah, probably. Still. But yeah, you've heard the word kings, mm -hmm. so we're going to take it. It's, it's, I know it's stretched because I just said the word kings, um, yeah. but we're still going to take it because we have other clues. Again, I'm super interested in the John Calhoun piece just to see if something's going to pop up about that. Um, but the next place we're going to go to is our last stop, just so you guys know. It is about two and a half blocks from here, and we're going to be in Washington Park. By the way, where did everybody park, or where are you going after you're done with, with us? We we'll park right next, right next to y'all. Right okay. Yeah. Doctor? So Dr. Ladd, we talked about is 59 Church Street. Yeah. It's about 0.3 miles, two blocks down. So we've had things relevant to that house specifically. I okay. wait for something else very specific. Okay. I want to point out that there is a gentleman sleeping on the bench mm -hmm. to your left or behind you. So just be, we're going to just stay out of that area so that we we're all safe uh, once we start exploring the space. Um, first time I came here, this is a new space. I don't know everything. It's not a big lengthy story. It's very quick and brief so we can get to work. Um, I didn't know what to find when we were coming in here. I experimented with a new group and I said I need to find a new spot. Come what? Let's go find a new spot for me to hang out for the next year. We came in. There's a million monuments, guys. Look around. I mean, we didn't know what we were going to find. What we did find, and normally I would take us straight over to that bust over there, um, to your left. But obviously there's another tour group nearby. But that's why we're here. First time we came in, the young lady using the spirit box heard the number 1828. It's obviously a very specific year. That's the year of that gentleman's birthday. We also heard the name Henry. That's that gentleman's first name. We also heard the name Tim. The gentleman's last name is Timrod. So we had Henry, Tim, 1828. Again, I knew I heard the story of Henry Timrod somewhere. So I was like, all right, we'll see what else we can find. And I'll do a little bit of research so at least I have a piece of history to tell. Here's was he how murdered by any chance? No. Oh, okay. It was I not. heard murder. <laughs> not murder. Um, quick brief on his life. He was very sick for most of his life, right? Um, so he's obviously alive during the Civil War, he wanted to go fight for the Confederacy. He goes out to the battlefield, but his comrades realize he's too sick to fight. They send him home, knowing that he's a poet and a writer. And they say, go be the voice of the war. So he comes home, back to Charleston, and he starts writing poetry based on what was going on on the battlefield. He became known as the Laureate of the Confederacy. For us writers, that's a high prestige title to have. So very impressive. So, a few years after he comes home, he has a son. The son dies at a very young age and has a very unique birthday. So hopefully those of you at Spirit Boxes, you're going to find out what his name was, his birthday, and how old he was when he passed away. Very sad and depressed by all of this, he's still sick. Two more years go by, and his college buddy calls him up and he says, why don't you come out to my cottage out in Columbia, and that way you can finish working on the piece you're working on for the paper in Charleston, give the wife a little bit of a break, and just work. So he goes out there, and that's where he wrote his last words. The last words he wrote were, Beholder of brief mortality, meaning person of short life. And then he coughed, and it landed on the page in a blood stain. That blood stain looks like a man writing. He had tuberculosis, by the way, in case you didn't figure that part out. So um, the blood stain is actually kind of an infamous thing now. We all call it the blood book here in Charleston. And they only show it one day a year at the Charleston Library Society, where his collection is being held have to be a member of the society in order to see the book and that one day a year is on Halloween yeah imagine that however the internet is beautiful I'm going to show you the blood page stained oh, cool. book um, and show you where he wrote his last words 
what I'm going to do after that is I'll read a very short stanza of his poem called Charleston to hopefully stir things up. This is a very shy, introverted writer. Know your ghost. So again, it's going to take us a few minutes to be able to figure out if he's going to be contacting us or not. I will also tell you the EMF readings we've gotten out of this space, 161 is now the highest one. In different grassy knolls of this area, it's been up to the 150s and well into the triple digits. So keep that in mind. You're going to have to find it because it changes every time we have found it. So we've only had the same location, I want to say twice now. So on two different grassy knolls, we found it the same location. So let's show you the blood book first, and then I'll explain why we have the SLS camera, because this is the location of why we have it. Uh, where's that bloody page? There it is. So we'll go around the room, and you can see where he coughed on the page. Looks like a man writing. Holder of Brief Mortality, written as his last line that he's ever written. So, again, this is what we call the blood book. We have gotten his name, like I said. We've gotten the year of his birth. We've had uh, coughing. We've had blood book, you know, in different phrasings. Um, so, quick little stanza, and it'll make sense. And what's funny is we actually caught one of the specific terms from this stanza in the Spirit Box recording from last night, even though I didn't read it last night. It was almost like he reminded me, like, hey, you forgot to read my shit. <laughs> I know not in the temple of the fates God has inscribed her doom, and all untroubled in her faith she waits, the triumph or the tomb. This was written right in the middle of the Civil War, basically stating that the outcome of the war determines the outcome of Charleston, the triumph or the tomb. We had the word tomb show up on a spirit box last night, hmm. and we missed it in real time. So take that for what it's worth. Um, now, as far as why we have that camera that Doug's holding right now, uh, back in December, I actually had a guest bring me the original. Like, he was, it, was, it was his camera. He wanted to test it out on an actual investigation. We had a full eight-minute interaction with a person standing right next to the bust inside the cage, taller than the cage. So when I say eight-minute interaction, Henry, is it okay if I read a stanza from your poem, Charleston? Raise your right hand. His arm went up and came back down again. When I say eight minute interaction, it went on like that as I walked around the same fashion that we did with Cohen at the last location to make sure we had a point of reference and to see how big this figure actually was. How he disappeared, I had a team full of men, except for one woman. The only woman in the group goes over and offers to shake Henry's hand, asking for him to outstretch it and he disappeared. We have to remember the time frame that he came from. Probably disrespectful for a woman to offer her hand to be shaken that way. So again, we never got him back and the camera stood still the entire time. I was the point of reference as I moved around and we had everything. The guy didn't know how to record yet, so we used one of my cameras, an infrared camera from another person, overstretching the guy's shoulder so we can get the footage because he didn't know how to hit record. Um, so the footage is actually up on my website. When you guys, you're going to realize we're going to talk about your data before we separate, but um, your data stays on my website for an entire year. So, yeah, I don't hide anything. It's up there. So some of you are actually asking me about like some of all the evidence that I collect. It's up there. Go look. You want to look at a specific date? If I toured that night, it's up there. So it is what it is. Um, but again, we're going to spread out. We're going to stay out of the way of the other tour groups when they pass through here. Um, obviously, you're going to be looking for really high numbers that we don't normally see in other I spaces. 4.9. 4.9. Uh, so right we're already on a good video. start. That's good. And again, just be mindful of the gentleman on the bench. So again, this is our last stop. Let's have some fun with this. Ask. Just be very gentle with how you ask things. He's just, he's a little introverted, so it might take a few minutes. Um, any words before we... Um, I have collective, jumped, chain, automobile, and then I already told you about W and doctor. I like W. That's a definitive thing. We've had that, I, I'm going to say we've had that here before. Yeah. As we were walking yeah. in, no less. Yeah, it um, came up then. So, and that monument right behind you is that of George Washington. Oh, so, okay. again, that's, we're in Washington Park. Oh, there you go. So, again, very... We do get things relevant to um, those two monuments over there as well at times. So that stone in the middle of the brick over there is a uh, like a tribute to Andrew Jackson's mother, Elizabeth Hutchinson. So we have had her initials and her name show um, and mother of Andrew. Like we've had those kind of things pop up. And over there is Marguerite Volk. We on the Ouija board device I explained earlier. We've actually had her name spelled out missing one letter. Marguerite. Think about that. What is it like? Nine letters in that name? So we're only missing one letter, and it spelled it out consecutively. It was not an anagram that I pieced together. Mm -hmm. It was spelling it out for us. So very cool stuff. Um, but yeah, let's spread out and have some fun in here. Definitely, Cohen, you're, you're the star right now again because we're going to need to know where you're having all of those crazy hot spots. I
You got something? Hmm. Let me get you guys in view here and see if I can see anything. Film my butt. Are you recording right now? Yes. <laughs> Nothing. That would have been freaking hilarious though. No, nope, not really. Okay. They, um, yeah, they come out of yours. They had the iPad there, and they had. I was standing behind them. It looked like they had like a stick figure, kind of on the uh, the right of that tree. Okay. Which was leaning off to the left there. All right. I want to go over to the. Um, I was behind them with this. I wasn't wasn't capturing anything, okay. unfortunately. But. Well, that's the, the three different style of cameras that I use. We're using two of them tonight. Um, they're not always going to capture the same thing. Mm -hmm. So if he has something, you're probably not, and vice versa. So again, it just depends on how they want to manifest and how are we going to capture it. Now, if I had all three cameras, I'd love to have all three cameras on a tree. You know, that way one person, they have the same point of view from all three cameras mm -hmm. and they just walk around with that big heavy tree of all three cameras, but it just doesn't work out that way. Mm -hmm. Especially with the iPad using LiDAR technology and the infrared camera uses light we can't see. So it picks up the lighting from the LiDAR. So you can actually see the dotted grid mm -hmm. everywhere. Be, even though we can't see with our own eyes hmm. it's interesting because I'll, I'll see like where the two cameras cross in the same investigation and I'm like oh that's the square from the LiDAR technology so I kind of have to keep in mind like what's what it's not a flickering of light mm -hmm. oh my god we had a crazy orb there's 30 of them look <laughs> <laughs> who is this orb I know right but the infrared camera has caught us some pretty large orbs like hmm. when I say large I'm talking like bigger than my head oh, like, really? like moving intelligently 
Oh, like neat. not just like a out of the frame. I'm talking like move slowly, stop, twist a little bit, move up. Like craziness. Wow. Yeah, really cool stuff. Liver still. Oh, still panel. on liver. Panel. Liver panel. She had liver meat panel. before that. Like meat liver panel. Meat, oh, liver, meat panel. liver panel. Okay. That's, that's a, that we, doesn't we check in somebody's liver, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> you guys noticing all the other tours are staring at us? Yeah. It happens on a nightly basis. Oh, yeah? We're the weird group. If you're wondering where the weird people are, let me get you in here because yeah. you're the person. Yeah, hey, cool. Yeah. We're it. Yeah, I got to follow up with them because they apparently had a stick. Guys. For what? I feel disappointed. No, this is kind of cool. Either. Either. I'd like to see the footage. Oh, got something coming. Trap. Hmm. That's something else coming. Have you had any worries lately? I got ivory like three times. Ivory? Yeah. Three times? Yeah. Trap. I got liver panel either. The name Michael shows up here a lot because that's St. Michael's Church. It's almost on a daily oh, basis. Okay. And we do get a lot of religious oh. terms when we're around St. Philip's and St. Michael's. So you'll start to hear like Bible, you know, church, pastor, anything dealing with a religious style setting. So we do get a lot of that around St. Philip's. I'm surprised nobody said anything when we were back there. Larry is too... Larry. No, I don't know That's a Larry. Too modern. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, Lawrence would have been, you know, shortened during the 1800s. And if we were talking 1700s, probably yeah, but 1800s I could see a Larry. Leanne's laser focused. <laughs> <laughs> trying to give you guys another minute again he, he takes a minute to come out but again we got a lot of tours in here and you said he's shy right? yeah so last night we didn't have anybody in here it was just us just me and my group and we actually had a handful of terms come up we had such a black velvet play. black velvet yeah <laughs> I don't know that he was a drinker <laughs> <laughs> Was he known for wearing black velvet capes or anything? She was like looking at me so So I think it's because the breeze that we have in the back of the tree. Yeah. 
Now, before, it was because we could see the tree, and it was almost like it was beside the tree. It was, it? yeah, it kind of like it was, was leaning like, like on the tree. Like it that. was like human form. Mm -hmm. Okay. It so, wasn't just the dots that you're seeing. No, it wasn't that. Nice. So, and like, it almost looked like it was like leaning up against the We got Camila Hunter Drunk Equality Camila Concern. Oh, you got anything at all? Superstition. It's finally adding to get up down here. She just had like four words pop. Hunter, okay. Hunter Drunk. Camila Equality and Concern. The drunks probably need. <laughs> well, she heard black velvet, so. Leanne, you got anything else? <clears throat> John and Jesse. John and Jesse. Neither one of those are the, the wife's name or the son's name, so. Yeah. Well, you got what? I had a Jesse. Did you? Well, I'll find, I'll look into some of the wives of the people that are here and kind of see if that matches up with anything. I think the most significant thing we had was a, a small 4.4. Um, he, he, he had a 5 or something he had a five coming four. down the oh, steps yeah. of the main monument Okay. just now. Just now. Uh -huh. So 5 point, we'll just say 5.0 because I think you gave me a 5.2 earlier, is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then I had a 5.6. Oh, I just heard W. W? w? Yeah. Another W. So maybe we got Washington. I was wondering, um, the Dr. Ladd mm -hmm. and his friend that had dueled, um, do you, you wouldn't happen to know the name of the actress they were kind of arguing I about? I don't, and I dove into that. You did? I did. Because um, that's when Jessica came up when you were starting here. Yeah. And then I had Jesse. Yeah. yeah. It is very, again, I like looked into an, a list of actresses that were traveling in that year to try to find, like, where there are common things. And it was probably based on the same scenario of, like, what we're dealing with here. I don't remember because it would have been probably a year ago. I couldn't find any relevance. But I'll definitely look at that name again and see if I can find that list again. Because, um, again, I'll do some, like, extensive things. If, like, normally double things, if it, it just means it's shouting for attention. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, I mean, it's a good catch, the Jesse and Jessica. So we'll see if I can find anything in, in 1786 of the traveling actresses that, you know, that were around. There weren't many. So it's, it's not a... Right. <laughs> it's not a lengthy list. I just got to, th th you know, thumb through it. Um, we do have a figure on the SLS camera again, almost like leaning on the tree. So I'm interested to take a look at that. Um, and again, he said it looked like he was almost like leaning on the tree with a, with a leg crossed. So again, we'll kind of see what I find on that. Um, and we do have some footage of the tree and how it picked that up. So you're going to see just a stick and then it kind of spreads off towards the top. It's not going to look like a person. So again, very interesting, and I'm still learning about that device. So again, it's going to be great footage for me to have a comparison. Yeah, you're picking up the people in the background over there. Yeah. All right, so um, I say we head over to that bench over there, and I'll kind of tell you how this is going to look tomorrow morning, and then we can get pounds of food.